Yes. All right. So now I guess we can officially open everything. Welcome everyone here. Um, we are following the CNCF code of conduct that you see in our documents. Um, we respect everyone. We're kind to each other, mutual respect. Um, so um, now we'll open uh, the floor and issues. We are recording, first of all. So um, just keep everyone honest and um, we, this might be, this might go around the world. So um, I'm Rob Koch. Um, I'm the co-chair of the CNCF Deaf and Hard of Hearing Working Group. And uh, Destiny couldn't make it today. So I am hosting in her stead and taking care of all of the rest of that. So um, we've, okay, who's here first of all? And the agenda for today, any new faces we need to um, welcome. Emmanuel, of course, um, is here, but she's not a new face. She comes in on and off. And um, and Zeno Chin, hi, nice to see you again. Good to see everyone. Awesome. And so um, we have people from all over the globe here today, everyone. So Deaf Awareness Month. Um, we're live streaming um, a bunch of content for that. And um, Anastasia, were you talking about that recently? Yes. Um, I was a little distracted, but um, yeah, yeah, you just began really officially. So anyway, so I would add because um, <laughs> I'm just kind of all over the place, but I would add that, yes, it's Deaf Awareness Month. Milad is saying, um, yeah, we think of something you can throw it in. I got to check. Milad saying, meaning Monday, uh, yesterday, Monday, um, I did a dry run, a practice session on um, for this Thursday, which will be an event here. And it's going to be a real challenge because there are two things that are going to really be a struggle, I think. Um, we don't have interpreters. So um, that's going to be something I have to do for the first time. Um, let's see, well, I mean, how do I say this? Um, I, I'm working with someone who can't hear but relies on captions. So, you know, I'm not sure to understand how to communicate best, but um, so we'll have to have a private chat as well as open communication. So it probably won't be very easy uh, to get it done, but it's a great group. I'm glad to be there to support everyone um, with accessibility needs for sign or not. And, um, you know, it, 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 it'll work. It'll just be a challenge. Um, but I think after about 10 minutes, then um, the other person will join us and um, we'll be asking, uh, you know, what help is needed at that time and we'll offer whatever assistance is required and um, we'll be explaining about um, the platform and everything that we're going to be talking about. So when we're done having that technical talk and then we leave, um, then it'll be more of like a, I guess, a deaf sharing event um, and there'll be three different groups involved. And I, I don't think it'll be perfectly smooth. You know, it will have some issues. Um, and, you know, I expect the video won't be great. The technology won't be great because our internet connection isn't wonderful. So um, I, I think we'll probably, I don't know. The, I don't know if we'll have problems with the platform, but um, we're just going, if you can share the share your experiences with hosting something like that, I would appreciate any thoughts you might have on the matter. Yesterday I was on a platform um, trying to have um, a discussion at our meeting and it wasn't great. We had a lot of freezing and the caption wasn't fantastic either. So, um, you know, it, it, I agree. It can be very challenging doing it remotely. And Milad is saying, okay, let me ask you something else. So when you see some people and it's, you, you see they're the same people, their cameras are freezing. I mean, is it mostly 
are you seeing it from specific people or the whole uh, platform? Some had frozen and some were more serious than others, so it varied. Do you had, uh, hey, Anastasia. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think what Milad is saying is something we've all experienced and um, when you advertise it and you put it on social media and you know, it's Deaf Awareness Month and we put it out there and we start in LinkedIn and you know, maybe some people see our content and that's really great. And then I have other people who have, you know, seen some of the content for Deaf Awareness Month and then contacted me privately to ask more questions. Um, and I, it, it has brought to my mind that we need to do more about deaf awareness kind of issues and um, because people just don't know. And let me see, there was something else. I think, um, I think that was it for me for right now. Okay, and Milad is saying, Anastasia, um, I was talking about like yesterday, um, I had an experience. No, I don't have anything to add to your experience with your workshop and all of what you're talking about. But for um, September, this Thursday, um, I was thinking, how do I improve the experience for accessibility, for meeting people's needs, and um, hoping the platform works well for us to host the meeting? Did, I didn't just know if you had anything to add on that, Anastasia. Um, yeah. Um, what do you think? Okay, so yeah, everybody's screen moved when, all right, so yes, I'm going to host an event, a live event, and there'll be um, some over a platform as well on um, a virtual platform. And I'm just trying to make it as smooth as possible, you know, because the chat will be, I'm not sure the chat will be great. And I'm not sure keeping the chat on will be wonderful for the presentation anyway, because it'll be very intrusive as it interrupts all the time with people asking questions. So I'm not sure that'll work. Um, well, have people join before and, um, and wait, have them come in and wait. And then Milad, tell everyone what you're, what you're planning to do it and do it. Maybe use Slack. Um, but I think that's the only way you just have to do it, how you can do it. I don't know if there's, there's a perfect way to do it. And the interpreters, oh, okay, you, there will be interpreters. Yeah, I, I think Catherine said for that other meeting we're talking about, did you, Catherine, did you did you wanna add and talk a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, I think the CNCF will take care of, of that, but um, I wanted to say something regarding um, the, the flow. So I think we do have several groups and I think we need to be like kind of meet in the Slack channel uh, because not everyone can be uh, backstage, right? Uh, so there is a limit on how many people can be in the platform. Um, and so we're gonna have several groups and the first group needs to uh, uh, be backstage. Uh, and then uh, I, I don't know, one of you should put them on. Uh, you have to decide who, We'll do that because I remember one time you were doing it at the same time and people were on and off. Um, so uh, you bring them on stage and then whenever the next group should come in, you have to let them know as well to log in. So I think we need to communicate over Slack because uh, we cannot all be on, re uh, on Restream. Restream does not have the capacity for that. Um, and also I saw that there are like groups of, is it three right now? Um, I would actually think that it's better to have bigger groups to make it yeah, more engaging. Yeah, there'll be groups of three. So instead of, you know, like having three, because to make it more dynamic and more uh, maybe engaging, like if you have like at least four people on each team, that would be ideal. Why not? It's a big challenge. Yeah, maybe four in each group rather than three, yeah. three groups of four. Yeah. Three seems a little 
I, I, I don't really want more groups, Malad saying. No, because... no, no, not more groups. More people in each group. Fewer yeah. groups and more people. It's still yeah, a huge challenge yeah. because um, it, from my point of view and my experience, just uh, having a two or three, I mean, if you get four, it just gets really confusing. So it, that's just my personal experience and opinion. So, um, so it, yeah, mm -hmm. well, if we're talking about deaf people signing, Rob is saying it's very distracting to have too many in the group because visually you can't keep track of that many people on a stage. Mm -hmm. Is that what you mean, Milad? Yes, yes, okay, okay. And also I feel like, on the platform, it's not, well, also we have an audience there who's going to be asking us questions, you know, so it's not easy to navigate that. Um, the more people you have, the more complicated it gets. I don't know. I mean, maybe we can change it up next year or in a couple of years, um, but keep it the same format we are talking about now for the core issues. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it could work, but if we start adding and making it bigger, I mean, it may not be bad, but yeah, we can, um, we can talk about that in the future, uh, future platform events. Um, Catherine, did you want to add again? Yeah. So if it's only three, uh, there is a little bit more pressure on you to make it engage because it's engaging, right? Cause it's like only three people on screen when there's more, like there's, you know, it just, flows easier because there's more people to say something so uh that's why i thought like more people could be more fun and dynamic because like sometimes you don't really know what to say but like so yeah so because the idea is to make it like a, a conversation between all of you and see and encourage people to ask questions right so we don't know how many you, you never know how many people are going to watch live because that's the wild card so you have your questions, so that's great. But we should also ask the audience, right, if they have questions and prioritize those, right? Uh, I think there are different topics, so let the audience know this is the topic you're going to uh, cover. Uh, but do encourage them to ask questions, and you have to put the tab on and restream so you can actually see the questions from the, the audience. If no questions are coming, just go with your own questions, right? Like, don't ignore, you know, that. But I think... We do want to engage with the audience, right? Because that's like the big opportunity there. Right. Yeah, and also, yeah. Also, we want to recognize, um, acknowledge in the chat, um, we're talking about a limited to 10 or 15 minutes per presentation, meaning more people per um, stream. And it's harder to reduce that and keep it down to 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and it's easier to do that if you just have a few people. And if you have the more people, it's yeah, on the stage, it's harder. It just takes more time to have more people. Plus, Milad saying, um, some members here are relatively new to being on a platform. So, um, you know, it takes time to get comfortable with that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so is is that a discussion we want? To, do we want to vote or just do we want to say three? Because um, I, I would, since Milad is running that platform, you're running that, right? You're, and then Anastasia and Milad are running that. Yes. So I, I, I feel maybe we should defer to what Milad wants. And um, Anastasia, do you have thoughts or are you good with what we had discussed before? Um, I think Anastasia is looking at the chat. Anyway, that's fine. Um, we've, we've got other stuff to work on, <laughs> other stuff to discuss. All right, moving on. Um, so we can table that discussion and maybe a year from now we can, or two years from now, we can change it up, but we'll just leave it like it is for right now. Yes, Milad. Okay, for the platform, one thing is that is a challenge. If I have guests join, like backstage, I, I won't be able to really see them. I'll be the only one on stage because I'm hosting. 
and I'm kind of running it. So I'll be able to see everybody who's coming in the entire platform of people who are coming in, but I won't be able to see the, the individuals won't be able to see each other in the backstage area. So I think it's going to be a little challenging from that regard. I did um, <laughs> another one that was called StreamArt and we had um, people on the stage and we could all see one another. And so we could have that open conversation. It wasn't live, but um, we could really exchange information and have a real sharing conversational type presentation, but I'm not sure that's how it's going to be here. I, I would like it to be that way, but I don't know. Um, Alfonso, did you have something to say? Yeah, I like that. On the, the Linux stage, we were talking about that. Um, the lightning talks when we had interpreters and the interpreters can see us. Um, but I don't I don't know how that will work with the interpreters. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really understand what you mean. Um, For example, having the interpreter who can, a live interpreter on a screen and you can see the interpreter, everyone can see the interpreter. Oh yeah, there'll be live interpreters. There'll be live interpreters. Oh, okay, okay. So um, if it's, it, yeah, if they're very far away, they couldn't, um, interpret for us, they couldn't voice what we're saying. So, um, I mean, certainly cameras can be turned off if you prefer, um, but yeah, the, we'll have ours on and the interpreter will have theirs on so we can all see each other for sure. So yeah, but yeah, cameras will be on for that, I think. Okay. I guess we'll test it out before <laughs> and make sure it's working and, and uh, do prior testing, right? Yes, yes we will. Okay, so we'll leave it with three groups or four groups of three, right? Or three groups of three? I think for now it's it's not enough people. So we'll do the three groups of pe three groups of three. And the fourth group, maybe we'll see. It depends on people. It depends on who's available, how we can put people and move people around. Catherine. So, uh, Rob, are you confirmed 100%? Yeah. Oh, great, great. And Emmanuel, you are still maybe, right? Uh, you're at no, the uh, no, I'm uh, discuss uh, with um, Anastasia and uh, I'll tell you uh, uh, 10, 15 minutes in nine. Okay. 10 p.m. Uh, I um, I saw uh, we must hear all the time, but uh, it's just uh, 10 or 15 minutes. It's so important for me. I can find a room for this time, so I can uh, participate. Awesome. So, yeah, because otherwise, yeah, if it's just two, that might be a little too little. So just wanted to make sure that we don't get last minutes. Yes, and I, I told, uh, yes, I talked uh, with uh, Anastasia. Okay, great, great, great. Just wanted to make sure. I'm glad you're all on top of it, I see. <laughs> Thank you, Anastasia Singh. So if after the live stream is over, I'm saying maybe it's gonna be about an hour. Can we get some of the good clips from that? And um, then I can make a video that we can share out on social, on, on the socials. Um, it, I mean, we don't have to, but I would like to. So if it would be okay, if we could take clips from that and make a video. Okay. Are we done with that? Can we move on? Are we good? Okay, everybody's good. All right. 
we'll see. We'll, we'll do three groups of three for now and then table it and see. And um, good, good luck running the show on Thursday, Milad. Okay. Um, did somebody else want to say something? Okay. Somebody popped up. All right. Anyway, uh, moving on. Um, next topic. Milad is saying somebody with an H was not able to join. I'm not sure what's going on. Sandeep, can you share your experience with Hazel? No response, so go ahead, Rob. This is Rob. Let's talk about Hazel later. So regarding Deaf Awareness Month and the social media campaign, what are you thinking? Is it going well? From my side, well, Anastasia saying, and Emmanuel's thumbs up, my lot's thumbs up. All right, I appreciate that energy. And Crispin, do you have any uh opinions about that pro or con jay what about you jay did you want to say something this is jay i'm wondering if i could um if there was an available slot if not that's fine great i'll i'll share everything all's good this is rob anybody else so what worked with that social media campaign? What do you think worked? Catherine? No, I just wanted to say we we do have still availabilities, Jay. So, I mean, if you don't want to or, or you're not like totally keen on doing that, that's fine. But uh, we, our goal was to have at least two posts per week. Um, so yeah, we, we can, we could do one each day. <laughs> we can flood the, uh, the internet. So whatever you want. Yeah, we wanted two or more, uh, but you would be the third, which means more the merrier. Please do, Jay. Jay saying okay. Uh, September 30th at 11.59 p.m., feel free to post. Jay said, okay, well, everybody's up at that time. This is Rob. So what worked, what didn't work? I'd like to hear your, your opinions. Do you have some advice or what should we do next year? Any words of advice? Um, we want to be ready with our social media campaign a month or two ahead of time. AJ, you had your hand up? Yes, um, I'm not very social media savvy and I went sort of in the beginning of the month um, and posts after mine, I noticed people were tagging each other. And I think that really helped a lot because not only do your network see it, then everyone else's network see it. And I didn't know that about social media. And so maybe if we have a list of everyone's social media um, handles or names, or we connect with each other and make sure that we can link to each other's posts, I think that really worked well on the subsequent posts after mine. And I did like the cards that Catherine made um, because those visuals really you know, the ROI on, or the return on investment on visuals. Um, people click more on visuals than they do without posts with visuals. So thank you for making those uh, media cards. Sure. Um, and I think like Emmanuel was the one who started tagging and I was like, oh, do, do, uh, shoot. So that was actually a good idea. We didn't say that, but like we were always posting in our channel so people can share, which we should still do, but we should also, um, we should definitely also tag people. So so you get to know when there are comments and everything, right? Otherwise you don't get any notifications. So good call, Emmanuel, and we'll learn for the future. Yeah. <laughs> but it, yeah, so well, yeah, it, it was a lot of uh, sharing, a lot of comment. Uh, so if, it, if we want and uh, I try it with my post and uh, I have uh, a lot of uh, uh, this also about my post, uh, we had uh, uh, two thousand uh, uh, person to interact with uh, my post. Yeah, you, 
you had a lot of uh engagements and shares i was like you have a big network it was like wow emmanuel's post got the most uh uh, uh think, engagement uh, so that was i wanted i wanted uh, to uh, show the other uh, story of uh, what in hope uh, my uh my network that not doesn't know you so we said that in is uh i can uh, show well, uh, who you are, and uh, now they know you. You are here. Absolutely. Hi, this is Travis. I wanted to add something. It's beautiful what Amy June said. Um, I plan to make a post of this after the live stream. I wanted to let you all know that I'm not a social media person myself. And I wanna keep my LinkedIn organized. I had a, a headshot uh, when I was looking for work, but when I got a job here at Convo, you know, I didn't really keep everything updated. But um, I didn't realize since I joined here that you all have been posting on LinkedIn. I didn't realize that because I don't check it every day. Really, I don't. I check fa Facebook every day because my family and friends are posting there. Um. You'll get to it, Salon saying you'll you'll become a LinkedIn checker. <laughs> yeah, I, I check f Facebook because I'm you know fear of missing out, but I don't mean to ignore you all, and I don't mean to ignore your posts. I just didn't realize, but I noticed that after y'all started posting this first CNCF post, I, now I see. Oh wow! Welcome. <laughs> You know, what's the best approach with social media posts? How does that work? I wanted to ask uh, the group if you wouldn't mind talking about it because um, I didn't repost on my um, accounts. And I didn't, I don't want to read between the lines. I just want to be real clear on how to, to support use, how to support each other, to make sure the information is right, the approach is right all of that. That's my comment. Go ahead, Hazel. Just for social media, there are kind of three main things that you want in order to have sort of a lot of engagement. The first one is that the first sentence needs to be really, really high engagement so that people look at it and they see it. The second one is that you need to post semi-regularly or the algorithm will drop you off. It does sort of an exponential back off thing of it. It tries something, see if people like it, and then slowly ramps up the attention over time as you post more regularly. If you are not a person who posts regularly, then the third thing is the most important one, which is when you post something, the first 30 minutes dictates really severely how well the post is going to do. So if someone with a high follow count or someone with a high engagement likes or comments or shares or interacts some way with the post in the first 5, 10, 30 minutes or so, the more people that do that, the more LinkedIn's going to say, or any social media algorithm is going to say, oh, this is getting traction. Let's spread it out. And so typically they do kind of like a first round and then a second round and then a third round and then they start ramping up. And so if you can pass that kind of third round of people, you're going to get that ramp up and that's where your really viral stuff is gonna come from. So that's where like on my posts, I can tell whether or not something's gonna get more than 10,000 impressions in the first 30 minutes.
Yeah, I've seen that Hazel Hair is really good at social media. Well, oh, by the way, so uh, I have to share that post in our channel too. So Hazel will be speaking at Qpresh. Uh, so I forgot actually, we should all share that. Um, for the lightning talk this time, I gave the talk to the new uh, uh, blind and visually impaired group because like let's last time Sandeep had it. Uh, but yeah, so we have Qpresh again. Uh, and uh, I wanted to make sure as well to invite someone here and Hazel has like a very technical and inter interesting background. So I'm very excited to hear her talk, but we should all help um, and um, and uh, yeah, get the word out. So um, I forgot to do that. I generally kind of do that when someone posts to post that in our channel because we're all supporting each other's talks, right? <laughs> Oh, and I think, uh, yeah, Rob was gone and it's like, but now you're back. I think, uh, are you right? We are, and I think we're at the sign language glossary update, unless anyone had something else to say about social media. Nothing more about social media. That's Travis. Okay. This is Travis. Okay, now we're going to talk, talk about the glossary update. So four people came to the meeting last Thursday, and I think it was pretty productive. So we're hoping to come up with signs for four particular words, and we all agreed on these signs. So that was great. We made some good progress. Next time we'll ha we'll meet on October seventeenth, and the next and then the meeting in November may be canceled because a lot's going on in November. That's a crazy month for everybody. Also, we want to spend some time, um, spend more time on that. Oh, Rob. What's the next, what's the plan of action in October? Four more signs, is that right? The four gestures? Yeah, we have four, this is Travis. We need to finish the contributor and the guidelines. Rob is saying, are you, have you put it in GitHub? This is, I'm blocked from GitHub. I can't go in there. I can't take a look. I I need volunteers to take a look, but there aren't enough um, got volunteers because Destiny has been available, but I'm not. We keep um, I keep postponing my test for the CACD. You know, each test costs some money, and we have to that license is going to expire at the end of November. So I need to focus on that. So I'm asking for you all to help me out. Rob's saying sure, yes, absolutely. Right, okay, great. Yeah, yes. I need some help. Yeah, we will help you for sure. And we'll upload some videos. You tell us what to do, where you want it, and that's it. You tell us what you want us to do and we'll get it taken care of, okay? You know, you can always ask me because I'm. I it's what's important is to follow. We have it in Canvas. Follow, follow all the steps. Canvas, okay. We can't record right now, so we're collecting signs at this point. But I really want to finish Good. that. Awesome, terrific, thank you. Okay. Any other questions, complaints about that? This is Milad. I have a question about the, is that glossary? Glossary. Mm -hmm. okay. My experience. Oh, sorry. I was going to talk. I was going to recognize Sandeep, but I didn't realize Milad was talking. With, if I, if I remember uh, right, we had four people. At the beginning, they would choose a word. 
or they or they would choose four. And my perspective that the thinking and the discussion about the signs was really challenging. They took a lot of time. So I think before the meeting begins, first choose the words two or three days beforehand and share it with them so they can think about it ahead of time. So the, the meeting itself will, will flow a little faster. That, those are my, that's my two cents. This is Travis, that's a great idea. I mean, each per we did assign each person with three words or should we do it that way? This is Milad, whoever's responsible for hosting, you know, say, remind them our meeting is coming up. You know, please look at the glossary channel and pick some words. And uh, when you meet on the platform, then the words have been chosen. I think the discussion will be easier. Travis saying, sure, we can talk about it in the Slack channel. That's a good idea. Okay. Any other additions to that topic? Okay. Um, Milan, you still have your hand up? Oh. <laughs> okay. Take it down. All right. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, Sandeep, over to you. Waiting on the captioning to catch up. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was deploying to Catherine. Uh, uh, so I think uh, I just wanted to wish everyone a happy billet and happy ideal day. So did any of you have any celebrations yesterday about the International Day of Sign Languages? Awesome. Thanks. Yes. Okay. And the second. Um, other celebrations? And the second thing that I have is that uh, the spotlight article that I was writing is almost finished. So I think you can see it here in the link here. Okay. In the link here, you can read the article. But apparently it is blocked from publishing because of some bureaucracy. Yeah. So, so usually, uh, what the reviewer is saying is that this should be on the CNCF blog. But the CNCF is... Uh, yes, thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you for putting in the chat. So what... Uh, you see, the CNCF is already publishing a lot of articles about us, videos about us. So the Fox says CNCF are really inclusive. But the aim of this article was to put it in the Kubernetes website blog and in the contributor site. So that actually we have a chance to build a rapport with more contributors, with more developers who are actually working in Kubernetes. But uh, it seems to have stuck a roadblock because the primary reviewer is saying that this should not be on the Kubernetes website. So I think uh, we have to find a common ground and see what we can, how to take it further. So I'm talking with Catherine and I'm also talking with the contributor experience team on how to take it further. Yeah, like uh, I think that um, the whole issue was that the reviewer didn't know your connection to the team and didn't know that it was uh, team effort so he just thought that you submitted something like a random blog post from someone who is not connected to the any Kubernetes group so I think once we add that you know like what your role is and how um, actually groups like these can help um, uh, or can be like a source for new contributors and maintainers because we're you're kind of like 
bringing people into the ecosystem, uh, as long as that link is made, uh, they said it's going to be uh, good for the blog post. So I think it's just like he didn't know. And then we just need to make that little connection. And once that connection is made, then it's like, so that's what, what was missing. Um, but I think it's just going to be late because I think they was supposed to be published yesterday, right? So that was the goal. So we're not going to meet that. But um, I don't think, it doesn't sound like it's a stop. Uh, we just have to make those adjustments about you and the role you play in that Kubernetes group. Thank you, Catherine. So I think you gave a short feedback. Uh, I work on incorporating the feedback. And I think right. the reviewer also given me a bunch of other review comments as well. So I have to work on those as well. So I oh. think maybe, maybe by tomorrow or something, I'm trying to hit it again and see if we have any luck. Yeah. I know it's a little frustrating when you think something is almost done. You think like it's ready to be published and then someone says something and you need to make adjustments. It's it's a little frustrating, but we are almost there. So it's like it it happens all the time, especially in open source. So um, yeah, just yeah, <laughs> it will be published. It will be published. Don't worry about it because I know you put a lot of effort in it. So <laughs> thank you, thank you. And just, uh, and just, I just wanted to say, like, uh, Emmanuel, would your friend like to introduce himself? Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Alex Tono. Uh, you can call me Alex if it's easier. And uh, I'm uh, Emmanuel's friend. I'm deaf too, and uh, I'm developer. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. This is Milad. Alex, I missed, are you hearing or deaf? Uh, I'm, I'm deaf. But you, but you speak for yourself, okay? Well, we've got a few deaf oral people, so. <laughs> uh, in you a lot of righteous sign language, we communicate with uh, uh, when we talk and uh, sometimes with uh, sign language in French, but uh, both uh, new. We don't know about I said just a French sign language. Yeah. That would be very confusing for our ASL interpreters. So thank you for speaking instead of just throwing a uh, French sign language at them. I'm sure they appreciate that. Zuno Chen wanted to add and said in Vietnam, um, deaf people there um, and hard of hearing folks um, sometimes the deaf people don't want the hard of hearing people involved. So the speaking group versus the signing group are very different. And there's a lot of um, separation between them. So it's nice that we have deaf and hard of hearing people working together here. Yes, yes. Showing the division between the deaf and hard of hearing people. So Vietnam is on the top, or you're talking about Vietnam, the country as your arm, being represented by your whole arm, I see, okay. Yes, Vietnam is, that's how we sign it with the V. And then we talk about the, the 
northernmost part of Vietnam, I think, and then the southern part of Vietnam. And um, so we have different areas and we use the, the arm as a visual representation of the country. So the deaf people are different in different areas of the country. The education system is different. And the deaf, yeah, deaf, exactly, is on the, it uses sign language more in the north. And we see some hard of hearing people there as well. I think that's interpreters hoping that's what <laughs> was correct. <laughs> There's a big cultural difference, Rob is saying, between the northern part and the southern part is what you're saying. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> Saigon or um, Ho Chi Minh City is, is Ho Chi Minh City is in the southern part versus Saigon in the north. And so there's a different cultural um, deafness and divide between the two. So very different culturally from the north to the south. And one country, but very different cultures. Got it. Okay. Thank you for telling us that, Milad, saying thank you for sharing. That's interesting. Okay, um, <laughs> hmm, I'm trying to figure out, Sandeep, are you finished with your comments and what you wanted to say? Yeah, and um, you were talking about French Sign Language, LSF. That was interesting. Okay, so, all right, um, moving on. KubeCon, who is coming to KubeCon, Salt Lake City? I have not seen my confirmation yet. It's in progress, Milad is saying. So it, it's, it's getting close, but I have not seen my confirmation. Okay, so most people are going, very exciting. So um, Catherine, will we have a booth like we did last time? Uh, a kiosk like we did last time? Yes, we, we will do exactly the same stuff as last time, maybe more. As you know, I never let you rest. You're going to be there and work. <laughs> but it's going to be fun. So a booth, right. we're going to do the um, open space discussion. I'm hoping to do the uh, sign language crash course, like the whole, the whole, yeah, everything. Great, wonderful. Okay, so that's great. So, all right, we will have the crash course and um, that's really cool. And we did that before in Paris and um, we had a lot of Germans. We had a lot of German folks show up. I don't know what it was about that, but they came in droves and we had a lot of people very interested and we had a lot of fun. It was a really casual, a light atmosphere, a lot of joking. And so it was great. Catherine, you probably, did you want to add? Oh yeah, because uh, one thing that I forgot to mention. So this time uh, the CNCF is doing a DEI hub. Uh, so they're doing other things too. Uh, and so our activities will be incorporated into that. Uh, and so I was suggesting there should be a DEI guide and like making more. So, cause like last time, a lot of people didn't know about activities. So um, yeah, I said like, let's just try and promote it a little bit better. But yeah, there's going to be this overarching theme, which is not only going to be focused on deaf and hard of hearing, but uh, everything we do should be part of that and should be promoted within that, you know, email that they sent. Uh, I was suggesting a blog post, a guide with all the activities so that people that are actually interested um, can, can see, uh, don't miss like all the different things that that we offer because it's like it's just such a big conference <laughs> it's difficult uh for people to find it if you don't have like a if you don't promote it accordingly Okay, so we got seven minutes left. Um, best practices. We have already shared a few things about that. Um, 
from last time. So um, we're going to have just a tremendous amount of stuff. I know a lot of stuff going on and it'll be, um, it, we'll have a lot of different talks, a lot of different um, meetings during the conference. Um, but do you feel they will, will provide interpreters for what, how is the interpreting situation? Will, do we have some best practices for them um, or some kind of link or open source that anyone can contribute? Um, if you have information or thoughts to add on that, please do. Okay, so we're, we definitely wanna open that up for contribution. And um, so KubeCon, um, we need some standard best practices for, um, and AWS too, and you know, different things like that. And, um, Microsoft. Oh, the Microsoft stuff too. Thank you. And um, yeah, mm -hmm. Oracle and um, other conferences so that they can understand how accessibility should be done in a conference format. Question. Um, would that, so we do have the best practices for conferences that include uh, best practice, like include stuff about uh, interpreters. Do you mean like improving that, adding to that, or do you mean like an additional best practice? Because like that's what we were sending conference organizers, and I'm sure it can improve, but I'm not sure what you had in mind, Rob. We just need to, all of us have a peek at it, review it and um, okay. tweak it if we need to. So, you know, in the past year, what we've learned, any additions, deletions, et cetera. Um, and the perspective of the conference, um, those people who hosted um, and adding the perspective of um, reading and understanding um, turn offs, turn ons on how to make it pleasant, how to make it nice um how to make it welcoming and accessible for everybody just that kind of thing just get everybody's eyeballs on it and get everyone's take if they have an additional thought also also something that we should include i think if andres is uh so andres did suggest a setup to get captions on screen which is with open source tools so i sent that to the cncf and I hope they will implement it for KubeCon because we darn need captions on screen, not on the app. But like, if that works, that should be part of the uh, best practices because we were always struggling and saying, what about all the KCDs? They don't have any budget. Local events don't have budget to pay like an expensive captioning tool. Uh, if we have a solution that works and is free, we need to promote that. And then there's no excuse for any conference not to add captions on screen if it can all be done with open source. Right. Yeah. So that is something that we should definitely include uh, in the best practices, because that was always our, we didn't have an answer to that. I know that, uh, yet uh, exactly, um, Milan, right? Like your uh, the KCD organizer in your town was not, wanted to do captions he didn't know it was too expensive so like we didn't have an answer for him but that could be that would be one and rebecca yes i would love to support that idea um for open source captioning i mean it's truly important for all conferences to have that and to be aware of what their options are in that um, category, because a lot of people don't know how. They don't know, and time is running out, of course. Um, so there's a lot of pressure, they get worried about it and they don't know what to do. Um, so if we have um, things we can come up with, um, we can make some sort of document that we can provide them. And then um, like for video, that type of thing, or to show how step by step by step how easy it would be or how to implement it or what to do that we could work together with them and then it can be a simple thing we can email them to help them understand how to implement that kind of accessibility yeah i think and maybe andres you can help with that is creating a doc where it's like a step-by-step -step guide 
what you need to do. And then we use your nice graphics. I can uh, share the Google doc that I shared with the CNCF. It doesn't have any text yet, but then um, yeah, just create that and then uh, publish it on our website. And in the best practices for the conference, we don't need to put a lot of stuff. It's like, if you, uh, if you're looking for free or a uh, way of, implementing uh, captions, here's a link, here's a guide on how to do that, because we're not going to do all the explanations in that, but we should link to that. And I think it would be really good to make it really easy, like explain step by step how to do it. The easier we make it, the more likely it will be that they will implement it, right? Again, we need to help them help us, basically, right? So that's our goal. Yeah, technology people, you know, um can do it easily and um, to do the um, English editing to make it nice and easy, we can definitely help with that. But for the technology part, um, it would be awesome for that support to um, have um, yeah. all the facts. All right, time's up. Thanks everybody. <laughs> Thanks for coming. See you soon, bye. Good meeting. We accomplished a lot. We covered a lot. Really appreciate your involvement and all your suggestions and all your inputs. So thank you very much. And um, see you Thursday, Milad. And see everybody soon. Bye.